Look, I get it. There's a lot of reasons why not to read science fiction fantasy. You don't want to read about fake people doing fake things in a fake world. That's kind of in your mind, just a waste of time. I understand the sentiment. I really do. And while your autobiographies are great fun, I'm confident that they are. There is a part in your brain, a creative area that is lying dormant. And maybe you have clicked on this video because it's about time you wake that thing up. I want to share with you 10 general tips that will help you ease into the grand, beautiful, admittedly fake world of science fiction fantasy literature. Welcome to the final video in our Beginner's Guide to Science Fiction Fantasy. My name is Dustin with Dragon Army Books and this sounds super official. In this video, I want to give you 10 quick tips that will help you ease into the genre a little bit better. Hopefully, you've watched the other videos in the series. If you haven't yet, I would highly encourage you to do so and then come back to this one as this will be a good summary that wraps it all up in a nice, tiny, little, fictitious bow. Tip number one is to suspend disbelief. Not only is this necessary when coming to the genre, it is okay. You understand what I'm saying? It is okay to do. It's okay to come to something and say this isn't real and still enjoy it. You've done it before. Like haven't you before considered with your buddies around a brewski considered what if aliens are real? You know what you just did? Science fiction. You know what you just did? Fantasy. That's a part of life. We sometimes suspend disbelief and it's enjoyable. Maybe you like superheroes, Marvel superheroes. Have you ever heard of it? The movies, Iron Man, you like the Hulk, you like Captain America, you like Thor. Guess what? They don't really exist, but you like them. Have you ever played a video game? Even if it's Call of Duty or like NFL 2K 2033. All of those, even though they might be grounded or rooted in some form of reality, they are science fiction fantasy as well because they are fake and you are creating that world. To some degree, you're suspending your disbelief and that's fun. Don't come into science fiction and fantasy saying, hey, that can't happen. Of course it can't happen and that's why it's fun and that's why it's cool. Listen to me, sometimes life sucks and you just need a break from reality. You need a break from the idea that like if I run outside and get hit by a car, I'm good, that's gonna hurt. And what would it be like if I could run outside, get hit by a car and the car hurts and not me? That's fun. Every once in a while, we need to be able to suspend disbelief and go into this fake reality world and it's enjoyable and not only again is it necessary it is completely okay to suspend disbelief tip number two is to lean into the curve what do you mean by lean into the curve dustin well thanks for asking i'll tell you what i mean is that anything that's new is going to have a learning curve and it might be uncomfortable at first when you come to science fiction fantasy because you haven't experienced it before. So there's going to be a learning curve. But what I'm encouraging you to do is to lean into that. Not away from it. Don't be scared of it. Anything that is worth doing has a curve. Do you know what else has a curve? Learning to play the guitar. But guess what? Many of you have done that. Do you know what else has a curve? Uh, get Working out at the gym. But many of you have gone in there. And it's uncomfortable at first because you don't look in shape like all the rest of them and you don't even know what this weight does or you don't even know what this machine does but the more time and effort that you put into it the more you become familiar and comfortable with it and the easier it becomes and the finer your body becomes all in all is what i'm saying is the more you read science fiction and fantasy the better your body will look metaphorically Literally anything worth doing has a process of learning and with learning comes a curve and with the curve comes tension, but I'm telling you to not pull away from the tension and to not ignore the tension, but to, to lean into the tension because as you do, it will become less tension full and it will become uh, easier and more accessible and more acceptable as you lean into the curve. Number three is to find a subgenre that appeals to you. I've already made a video, really two videos, talking about subgenres because not all fantasy books are the same. Not all sci-fi books are the same. You're going to have different subsets, different sectors or genres, subgenres within the massive umbrella genre of fantasy or science fiction. And you might like one and might not like another. So if you find one that you don't like, guess what? There are still dozens out there that you might enjoy. 
I'm convinced that there is a subgenre that appeals to you. Yes, you, Watcher, there is a subgenre that you will like. In fantasy alone, there's high fantasy, epic fantasy, low fantasy, contemporary fantasy, urban fantasy, alternate history fantasy, steampunk. There's so many different genres. Again, there's going to be some that you just don't like. You might be like, high fantasy doesn't really work for me. It's too much of a suspension of disbelief or complex magic systems don't necessarily work for me. But you know what? I like magic systems and, and fantasy stories that are set in a contemporary urban environment. I kind of like the mystery that comes along with that or the gothic nature that comes along with that. You're going to find something that appeals to you. Listen, you might not like, uh, I don't know, alternate history retellings of historical events uh, with fantasy twist because you didn't like history growing up. That was your least favorite subject in school. But maybe you do like vampires. Like you just love vampires for some reason. Well, have you heard of Twilight? There's going to be a subgenre that appeals to you. Click on the annotation to watch one of those videos, either the fantasy subgenres or the sci-fi uh, subgenres. And there I just list some of them. There are so many more. You're going to find something that you enjoy. Number four is linked to number three in that there are some similarities, but it's also wholly distinct, is find story elements that you like. In other stories, in movies that you watch, in video games that you play, in the books that you do read, what is a common thread? What is a theme that you enjoy? Well, then try to find that same kind of thread or theme in a fantasy or sci-fi book. Do you like where a protagonist overcomes obstacle after obstacle after obstacle to obtain and achieve their intended goal? Well, you're going to find that in SFF literature. Do you like the politics or the drama in a particular show that you watch? You can find that do you like the kissy kissy romance in the in the movies and the stories that you read you can find kissy kissy romance in fantasy they just might have pointy ears Science fiction and fantasy is like any other storytelling devices that are out there. You're going to find the same kind of story elements, themes, and trends that you find in other in other stories just here set in worlds that are a little bit more unfamiliar to you than our own. Tip number five is to start small. There are some science fiction and fantasy novels that are over 1,000 pages. There are even a few that are over 1,500 pages long. Don't. Like, don't do that. That's not all of them. You can start relatively small. In fact, some of the classics are even just a couple hundred pages that might be very easy to get through. There are some modern day ones that are around 200 pages as well, but I think a lot of them are going to fall between 400 and 600 pages. And, and while that's relatively small, there are some stories that are short stories or novellas, novelettes even, that are considerably smaller, still equally good, maybe not as epic in scope, but will help you tiptoe into the genre. And that's that might be a good thing for you. Also with Start Small means don't necessarily pick a, a an expansive series that's even ongoing right now. There are some books in these genres that are five books long, 10 books long, some even that are 20 books long. Don't sign up for that. Even for me, who is adept at reading some of these, some of these stories, a, a series that is 20 books long isn't appealing to me or, or is at least scary to me and is, is a barrier that I have to overcome. So that's even for me. For you, that's going to be the same. So I would say pick a book that is a trilogy at most. That is the first in a trilogy at most. Or you can find some great standalone sci-fi and fantasy novels that are equally as good as well. What I'm saying is there's not a reason to add another reason for not stepping into this genre. And, and one of the reasons would be is there's just too much. Start small which means that you'll at least start somewhere. It's a, it's a tiptoe thing, baby steps. Number six is start with modern fantasy. I know that I mentioned classic just a moment ago, and some of you might be okay with classic literature, but if you step in first and read Lord of the Rings, it might be an idea of yours because, hey, Lord of the Rings is, is classic fantasy and it is what everybody would go to maybe even in their minds when they think of fantasy. And that's for good reason. There's a lot of good things there. But the way that those stories are written, not only in the language that is used, and it is in English, but even there are some nuances there because of, of how that literature and that subset used to write, um, even the, the way they tell the stories and the links that they go to explain the scenes and um, what you're looking at and the feelings that someone has, you sometimes takes pages and pages and pages to do. And that might not be as 
in, uh, uh, immediately gr gripping to you as maybe some more modern ways that writers write. Basically, writing styles have changed over the years, and that's a good thing. It doesn't mean that classic literature is bad. Maybe if you read classic literature, then then this this is not a tip that you would abide by because that then Lord of the Rings or other books like that might be easier to get into because it is more in line with some of the ways that you're used to reading writers write. Uh, but if you are not into some of the classic stuff or Romeo and Juliet, you know, things like that might in, uh, might intimidate you, then I would say for now, stay away from some of the sci-fi fantasy classics and read something that has come out within the last 10, maybe even 20 years, and that might be more palatable to you. Number seven is to check out adaptations. I wouldn't typically say this because a lot of times adaptations are not as good as the source material, rather whether that is book to movie, movie to book, video game to movie, video game book, whatever the case might be. However, this might help you get into the genre a little bit more. So for example, have you played the Witcher games and you kind of enjoyed that? Well, that actually started as a book series that is supposed to be really good, if not even better in many ways than what Witcher 3 came out to be. Now, Witcher 3 Wild Hunt was a great game that I still haven't beaten yet, but that, that's, that's one example. Another example might be Star Wars. If you love that world that is Star Wars, well, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of books in the Star Wars universe. Some of them, by the way, are really good. And a lot of them are really bad. So you're going to want to find some good recommendations there. But my point still remains the same. That if there is a good uh, movie or video game or television series that you enjoy, look to see if it came from a book. And if it came from a book, then that might be an easy entrance into reading sci-fi fantasy because you already know the characters, you already know the world, you already know the general gist of the story, and you can even get a rich, a more rich experience by then going to the book, having already experienced the adaptation. Number nine is to read with a friend. Now, this works for any genre or really any kind of book, but this is especially true when you're stepping into a new genre. If science fiction and fantasy isn't something that you're familiar with, you can either find a friend that also isn't familiar with the genre so that y'all are exploring it together or read along with a friend that is experienced in the genre. This is what I've done with a lot of friends before who aren't as into the SFF literature as I am, but I have known them and their personality and what they kind of like in books and stories. And I've been able to pinpoint, hey, try this book. I'll read it along with you, which has heightened the experience for both of us as we've been able to read along together, conspire together, dream together. Hey, what could happen? Um, and me, a lot of times having known the story, it's fun to see, hey, what their guesses are, if they're right, if they're wrong, who their favorite characters are, as opposed to who mine are. It's a, it's a, it makes the experience much more rich, much more enjoyable. If you can find a friend that may or may not know the genre, but that can explore it with you, read with a friend. Number nine is one of my favorite subjects to talk about, and I think that I should make a video on it. I don't think that I have yet, and it is to try different mediums. When it comes to reading, a lot of us, we think of reading paperback or hardback novels. And while I still think that that is the paramount experience, you can also read eBooks on your phone. You can listen to audiobooks from various devices as well. I'll let you into a little secret. I'm reading 85% of the day. And the way that this happens is that at home in bed, I might be reading a paperback book. But when I'm on the go, uh, maybe during commute or uh, if I'm at, at, at a work break, or lunch break, I can read from my phone an ebook. Also, when I'm in the shower, when I'm driving, when I'm walking, when I'm doing chores, washing the dishes, I'm listening to an audiobook. And often I've got a few different books going on at a time. I wouldn't necessarily suggest that, but I would encourage you to try different mediums because in sci fi fantasy, you're going to be introduced to concepts, people, worlds, systems that are not familiar, even made up words on a lot of these things. Well, that might cause you to freeze up if you're reading it on a paperback novel and then you don't turn the next page. Well, if you're listening to an audiobook, that might free up that experience and keep you moving forward so that you're not paralyzed trying to figure out what all of this means. It also helps with pronunciations and to distinguish between characters, which are two key things that need to be done when you are coming into this genre. So I would encourage you to try new mediums.
And then here we are at the end. Thank you for those of you that stuck around for number 10. And that is don't give up. Don't give up. I've already said before that I'm convinced that there is something for everyone in the SFF genre. If one doesn't work, try another. And if that doesn't work, try another. There's very few people that are going to be able to just not make this happen for them. I really do think that there's something for everybody. And so if you take these nine tips that I previously listed and that you persevere and you push forward and if one doesn't work, you don't say, well, screw the genre and you pick up another and you pick up another, you're going to find something that works for you. Don't give up, persevere, push through. And if you follow these 10 tips, I think you're going to find a home in science fiction fantasy literature. Those are my 10 hopefully quick tips on how to get into the genre. Hopefully they've been helpful to you. If they have, share this video with someone else or if you are an avid science fiction fantasy reader and you want to get friends or family into the genre, share this video with them and maybe that we can together help your friends and family step into what I believe is the uh, most fun experience when it comes to reading. And maybe you have other tips that worked for you that I didn't include here. Please include them down in the comments below because not only will that be helpful for me in the future as I'm talking to friends or as I'm making future content, but for people that are coming to this video, they can go down in the comments and see what you suggest as well. I think that will be super helpful. Thank you as always for watching and for liking this video. If you haven't yet, click subscribe and join the Dragon Army and we'll see you in the next video.